guru made for you. This is the video on using Kramer's rule to solve linear systems, 3x3 three three systems. In the last video, we learned how to solve 2x2 two two systems. So we made a coefficient matrix, something like this. A, D, and then... I'm sorry. Oops. We made... Oh. We made a coefficient matrix something like this. A, B, C. And then we cross multiplied and then found a determinant and then divided by the determinant to find x and y. Today we'll be doing something similar. Kramer's rule is usually used for 3x3 three three systems because for 2x2 two two systems we can just use substitution or elimination. Where for 3x3 three three systems it would be it would take longer to substitute because you have to substitute twice and it's easier to use Kramer's rule. But for a 2x2 two two system, Kramer's rule would take longer. So let's find out how to use Kramer's rule to solve a 3x3 three three system. So we would first make our coefficient matrix like the last video. Except this one we would make a 3x3 three three coefficient matrix instead of a 2x2. Two so we would put the coefficients of x in the first column, the coefficients of y in the first column, the second column, and then the coefficients of z in the third column. So our matrix would look something like A, D, G, B, E, H, and C, F, I. So the way we use a 3x3 three three matrix for Kramer's rule is we recopy the first two columns. So we do A, D. E H. So the way we multiply and find our determinant with our coefficient matrix is that first we multiply those three and then we multiply those three and then we multiply those three and then add the products of all these and then we would multiply these three multiply these three, multiply these three, add the greens, and then subtract the purple, pink from the green. So that's kind of confusing. So let's use our variables. So you have A, E, I. A, E, I, so we multiply A, E, and I, and then we add B, F, G, oops, wrong color. We add B, F, G, and then we add C, D, H. So, see, C, D, H, right here, is this call, diagonal. B, F, G is this diagonal, and A, E, I is this diagonal. So, we're adding all those up, and then we're subtracting... Oh, one color. We are subtracting. We're subtracting G E C plus H F A plus I D B. So, basically, we're adding the products of these three diagonals and then subtracting the products of these three diagonals. And then we are, and that's how we find our determinant. Now, to find x, for example, we would replace the x variables with jkl and then do the same thing that we did here with the matrix multiplying and then we would finally divide by determinant a or the determinant. So let's try it. And we're going to try one and since this takes a long time, this takes some time, I will be showing you how to do X only. And you could do Y and Z on your own. And I will post the answers at the end so that you can know if you did it correctly or not. So 
we have this system right here. x minus 4z is equal to negative 6, x minus y minus z is equal to 0, and 10x minus 14y is equal to 8. And I arranged this with a bunch of gaps here and here because it'll be easier for us to make our matrix. Since there's no y term in this one, we can assume that the coefficient of y is 0 because if we do 0 y, that's the same thing as 0, so this doesn't equal anything. And same here is minus 0 z. So the coefficient would be 0. And then if you just have a variable, that means the coefficient is 1. We could put a 1 there. So let's try it. Let's find the determinant. So the determinant is equal to 1. Let me use another color will be easier to see. So it will be 1, 1, 10, 0, negative 1, negative 14, negative 4, negative 1, 0. And then we copy 1, 1, 10, 0, negative 1, negative 14, and we find our determinant. So 1 times negative 1 times 0 is 0. So 0, we have 0, plus 0 times negative 1 times 10 is 0, plus negative 14 times negative 4, so 14 times 4 is 56, and negative times negative is positive, so plus 56, and then we subtract 10 times negative 1 times negative 4 is 40, 14 times negative 1 times 1 is 14. And then 0 times 1 times 0 is 0. So we have 56 minus 54. And so our determinant is 2. So determinant is equal to 2. So that means that we have to divide by 2. Let's move down here. So our determinant is 2. So let's get our matrix. So we have 1. So we replace the x terms by the results, which is negative 6, 0, and 8. So let's put that in for first. And then we have 0, negative 1, negative 14. And then we have negative 4, negative 1, and 0. So let's recopy the first two columns. So negative 6, 0, 8, 0, negative 1, negative 14. And now we can find our x. And we have to divide by 2. So, negative 6 times negative 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 8 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 times 0 times negative 14 is 0. Well, that side was easy. So, 8 times negative 1 times negative 4 is 32. Negative 14 times negative 1 times negative 6 is negative 84. 0 times 0 times 0 is 0. Oh, I'm sorry. This is negative minus. My bad. So we have 0 minus um, 84 minus 32 is 52, so negative 52, which is the same as 0 plus 52. And we divide by 2. So 52 over 2 is equal to 26. Because 52 divided by 2 is 26. So that means that x is equal to 26. And I'll leave it to you to find y and z. And pause right now. And I will show the answer in 10 seconds.
Okay, let's see the answers right now for y and z. So if you did your math correctly, you should have gotten y is equal to 18 and z is equal to 8. So if you got it wrong, go back and check your math. You can make a lot of sign errors in multiplying here. So go back and check your work. And thanks for watching this video on Kramer's Rule, part two. Guru.